We have been told time and again that much of the borrowing by this government goes to pay our debt. Now, I can't understand when you, you uh, lay the figures bare that during your period you had done 3. Point what is it? 7, seven. Yeah. 3. Point 7 billion. And that Akufuado's regime has done in excess, 11 of, billion. in excess of 10 billion. Yes. Why is it that there's so much interest in our 3.7 billion that paying it we need about three times to service that debt? But usually you don't even borrow to pay interest because normally when you borrow to pay the principal, it's known as zero financing. So it's like refinancing. Mm -hmm. But that's what the interest. Because you borrow to do some project, it must pay for itself. So if you look at our borrowing, over 60% of the borrowing went into capital expenditure, critical infrastructure. If you look at President Kofado's borrowing, less than 50% went into capital expenditure. In fact, in 2019, when they borrowed most, 2.4 billion thereabout cities was used to finance free SHS. So they're happy. You've paid the parents' school fees. By the following year, you have to start paying the interest. The money is just not available. So it started catching up. It started catching up. So interest payment is moved from 10 billion when we're living. Now we are doing about 44 billion. Amortization is going through the roofs. And like Sim Bright said, in 2019, when we exited the IMF program, we programmed to pay about 5 billion amortization. We ended up paying 11 billion. What that means is that the investors were not convinced. Because when you program to pay $5 billion and you end up paying $11 billion, then you must go to the reserves. Or you must borrow more to pay because that means that there's a run on you. And in 2019, I'm just trying to distinguish the issue pre-COVID and COVID. So 2019, the city depreciated by almost 13% about double the depreciation in 2016. That should tell you something. If the city depreciated by 13%, it means there's a run. And in Ghana, we have domestic and public debt. In the US, domestic and public debt is based on nationality, because they deal with dollars. Ghana is based on currency. So when you have cities, we classify that as domestic. But within that domestic, Franklin Templeton and all those people, we borrow dollars and converted it into cities. But when you pay the interest rate of about 19.5% on $2.5 billion CD equivalent, and you pay it every uh, semi-annually, when they take that money, they then go to Bank of Ghana in 2019. They say, we want dollars. I want to convert that cities to dollars. So the real situation started showing in 2019. Then the deficit. You were reporting deficits under 5%. IMF reporting deficit over 8%. And is this deficit that transform into what you call your debt? So clearly, by 2019, getting to the end of 2019, we're having a major, major, major problem. And when you look at the 2021 media review, the manufacturing sector declined. The construction sector declined. The financing sector declined. The fishing sector declined. So you are seeing a huge GDP, but you are not generating the revenue from that big GDP to finance it because you are borrowing so much into the economy. And our economy, we value our GDP by the expenditure approach. So when you spend more, the GDP will grow, but you won't get that revenue in order to deal with the situation. And so moving into 2020, then COVID sets in. And quickly, this issue of COVID, we are told that, oh, we are in this mess because of COVID. Total budgeted COVID expenditure in 2020 was 11 billion. We ended up spending only 8 billion. That's the reality. We spent only 8 billion. In fact, our projected total revenue that we wanted, we got more than 7 billion of that amount for COVID. Because from 2021 and 2020, we spent only 12 billion. Meanwhile, we made 17 billion and another two billion. But ask yourself, even that COVID expenditure of eight billion, which was way below what we even budgeted for, where did we get the money? 1.2 billion of that amount came from the stabilization fund. 
So that should not have a negative impact on you. And you are talking CDs? CDs. One billion dollars, and that's where the special drawing right comes, which virtually every country, IMF said, look, because of COVID, mobilizing funds is difficult, so we're giving money. But you, but you take note of the fact that at this time when you say the economy was not as it were showing and certain sectors were not growing, um, we were, we were spending in excess of, is it 25 billion to take care of the banking sector? No, I'm talking 2020. 2020, if you look at the revenues, 55 billion, and the expenditure of about 100 billion, 8 billion of that is attributable to COVID and COVID-related expenditure. So you cannot blame just 8 billion to say that that's why we are in this mess. And I'm saying that even that 8 billion, Ask yourself the source of the financing. 1.2 billion from the stabilization fund. The World Bank gave us 5.8 billion. That's the IMF rep, rapid credit facility. We are not paying any interest on these funds. Until 2025, African Development Bank, 406 million. The European Union, all these agencies gave us money, but decided that they would defer the payment. You see, we are going to the IMF because of two principal issues. Balance of payment challenges and macroeconomic stability. Now, your balance of payment challenge simply means that you cannot pay for what you buy compared to your uh, other countries because you interact with them. My point is that the impact of COVID in terms of the cost structure is not even reflected now. Whoever will become president in 2025 and I'm convinced that President Mama will be president, would have to cough up extra 11 billion. If you look at our trajectory, we've postponed almost all the payments to 2025. So you cannot blame just COVID for the challenge that we have. And if you look at another table from IMF, deficits, Cote d'Ivoire did 6%, Nigeria about 6 all of them in 2020. Ghana did 15.7% in terms of the deficit. So a chunk of that deficit was not because of COVID expenditure, but clearly election-related pressures that is now catching up with us. And so we have no choice than to go. Because if you look at the January, February, March Ministry of Finance report for this year, mm. total revenue was about 12 billion. Total revenue. Meanwhile, debt servicing, that is interest and amortization, is 13 billion. So our total revenue mm. cannot even pay for the debt, mm. let alone pay wages, pay other statutory payments. So we are in a deep, deep, deep situation. Well, as we understand, if we are not careful, we are going to need the IMF to help us pay salaries, so to speak. Now, John, from what you understand so far, what is likely to give? Um, free SHS, we understand from communications from uh, government quarters that that one has been isolated as untouchable, non-negotiable. It should stay without anything happening to it. Um, we're waking up today hearing about feeding in some of the secondary schools, the difficulties they can't feed, and they are likely to shut down as a result of that. This is not a new problem. Um, you had mentioned earlier about funding free SHS and the difficulties with it. In fact, this finance minister uh, was, was, was overcome when he attempted to suggest an alternative to the free SHS implementation, where you could see the very reasonable people you know, agreed that the approach was wrong. And the best way was not to do it the way we are doing now because it's not sustainable. It looks like we, are, we have now <laughs> come to that reality. So what is it that you see is likely to suffer? As for Agenda 111, uh, 111 hospitals, uh, it's not actually started really yet, so I'm sure <laughs> that is easy to give, to give up. I think that you've, you've, you've raised a very critical issue. I think, Honorable Afenio, it's about one CD per people. Eh? I'm not too sure. It's, it's, it's not one CD, it's less. So let's even assume it's one mm. CD. 
I think it's about 60 pesos or so. And, uh, and we said that we want to provide one hot meal for each people. When I was coming, I checked the price of just one egg. It's over one city. <laughs> so already, even what you are allocating for free SHS, simply for, 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 for feeding, especially the students at the primary level, I'm talking of even feeding, it simply doesn't work. That is one. Two is that go to the 2022 budget. We project total revenue at 100 billion. That's what we project, total 100 billion. Meanwhile, when you take the expenditure lines, debt servicing today, that is both interest and amortization, it's about 50 billion. Mm. If you take compensation, you can't do anything about that. It's 36 billion. So that puts you in 86 billion. If you add statutory payments, they are statutory, a common fund and all that. It's about 40 billion. That takes you to 126 billion. So expectation management is a critical issue. In fact, your total revenue, everything, cannot even meet three line items, let alone come to talk about capital expenditure, goods and services and others. I heard the minister say that he wants to reduce expenditure by 20%. If you reduce discretionary expenditure by 100%, you will still not achieve that 20% cut. So certainly something must give up. And the IMF is not for that Christmas. Mm. What they do is that they sit with you, you give them a letter of intent. Yeah, so the school feeder, I think it's one CD per plate of the feeding. And they, they have been asking for an increment. Because as we speak, inflation is over 30%. Fuel has gone up by more than 100%. The exchange rate today is about $8.2 to the CD. So naturally, the purchasing power of that one CD at least has reduced by over 30%. So you are not talking of about seven, 70 pesos in terms of real purchasing power. I've mm -hmm. seen reports that even put inflation at 49%. And yet, this government is insisting that all their flagship programs will stay. The IMF will do one first thing, something. The first thing is that they have to satisfy themselves about debt services. That one, they would insist that you do that. Two is that you say you won't retrench workers. So wages and salaries, another 40 billion. What is left to be used? So government should even begin to manage expectation. This issue about, oh, we strategically move into IMF. Uh, we are entering there in a, with our own terms and all that. If you could do that, you won't go to IMF in the first place. So really, there are real challenges that all of us should brace ourselves mm. to face going forward because the situation is dire. It's really, really, really serious. And government must cut back on certain things. If I were government, my first option would be to look at food security. But that, for me, is very, very important. Mm. Uh, one district, one warehouse, most of them are uncompleted. And you see, that is where the drain is. One dam, one village, they were supposed to help with dry season farming. I've been to the Savannah region. Not even one dam, one dam, out of the dams they constructed, can support dry season farming. So you are putting a lot of money in all these areas and the returns is even negative mm. because you'd have borrowed money to build a factory, a, a warehouse, is 70% complete. But as we speak, we are paying. But my final one has to do with the debt that we are not even adding to the national debt. Bright talked about Sinohydro. We went to borrow two billion. And we said it's not national debt; it is a butter trade and that we're going to process our bauxite in three years into refined aluminium. We we'll use that money to service that facility. But in the agreement, it was explicit that in the event that we are unable to do that, government will have to stand up. I serve on the Mines and Energy Committee as a ranking member. I can tell you for sure that next year, when we start servicing that facility, we wouldn't even have a foundation in terms of a factory to process bauxite, let alone pay that. We've borrowed the hatchish from Get Fund over two billion. We've decided that that is not our debt. We've borrowed about eight billion energy sector levy. We say that that is not national debt. 
We borrow so much by creating special purpose vehicles and deciding that we won't add that to our national debt. So that national debt of 80.1% as a percentage of GDP is exclusive of all these debt I'm mentioning. But when you read the budget and you look at the revenue and expenditure lines, you will see that the revenues are coming, but they are going out mm. to service these facilities. So the minority will be meeting the IMF, and we want to make a strong case that all these contingent liabilities that are crystallizing ought to be taken account. And in our subsequent budget provisions, we must bring them from below the line and push them above the line, recognize them, and make provision for them. But what I know is that we are in for very, very difficult, very, very tough times. Right. 